Hello guys and welcome back to the Simply Code programming channel. This is Vikesh and let's get started with today's topic which is about serialization in Java. Now before we go further, let's understand why we need the concept of serialization. When you will be building the enterprise grade applications in, in different organizations, you will often have a use case or a need to send an object from one application to other application which is deployed on some other machine. So if you have a network of computers or if you have a lot of different uh, complex setup where you need, you have a producer application and you have a consumer application. Producer application produces the object and then this object gets traveled over the network lines, over the network wires and reaches at the consumer application. And how does the consumer application receive the object and how does the producer application sense the object? Because when the data travels over the network lines, it will be all bytes. So how do you convert a Java object into bytes, send it over network, and then the consumer application has to again convert that bytes back to an object representation and then store that or use that inside its application. So you need to do this whole conversion, right? So the process of converting an object to a byte so that it can be sent over a network is called serialization and the process of converting back the byte from the byte from the network to a Java object is called deserialization. So generally you, you may have a use case where you serialize an object, create a binary representation of it, send it over the network. And that's where the Java serialization concept kicks in. Whenever, whenever you have to do this in Java, you will be using the serializable interface. So you need to extend your objects from this serializable interface so that those objects themselves becomes serializable. You need to tell Java that this object is able to serialize itself and deserialize itself. And the way you will tell Java is by letting that object implementing the serializable interface. Let's have a look at an example for, of this uh, serialization and deserialization to understand this concept better. So here again, I've used the same student class where it has the name, age and address. So you can see I have created a student class, but the student class implements serializable. This is something which you have to add to your class. Second thing, the moment you do that, all the modern day IDEs like Eclipse or IntelliJ will ask you to add a serial version universal ID to this particular class. This is added so that Java can uniquely identify your object once it is serialized and deserialized. And it will also keep a versioning track of it, right? Because when you serialize the object, what happens if somebody hops over the network line and change the representation of your object and the consumer application will get a completely different object copy now. So this is Java's way to make sure that the same version which the producer application is producing is received by the consumer application. So it's also sort of a security feature. It basically, whenever you do an update onto the object, it is going to increment this serial version UID by one. So when you create the object first time and you serialize it for, for the very first time, the value is going to be set as default one. And as you mutate the object again and again, before deserializing it, the count will just keep on increasing. So that's how you keep a track of the state of the object which is being serialized by adding this long serial version UID. You can also specify your own value if you want to. By default, Java initializes a value of one and this is a long type variable. So that is the only new thing which is happening the moment you do implement serializable. After that, I have the same fields here. I have the constructor and the setters and the getters. And I, I also have a two string method just to print the object nicely where I print the name the age and the address. So let's look at a main class and where we use the student object. We serialize this object and then we deserialize this object. So what is happening here is I create a class. I create the main method and I create a student object. This is something which we have already seen. Then I want to store the state of this object. When, when you serialize this object, this object has to be either sent to a network. But since I'm running this demo on the same machine, what I will do that I will serialize this object onto my local file system. It's the same thing, right? You can put it somewhere and then fetch it from there. So either you can send it over the network or you can put it on a file system. So I create the object and then I need to store this into a file. So far, I have not covered the file handling operations. So we will not go deeper into the file handling classes here, 
but I will just explain you the reasoning for it. And when we'll do the file handling session, there I will go in detail about the file handling classes. So I specify a file name where the serialized representation of my student object is going to be stored. And this is the location where I'm supposed to store this. Then I create two different classes, which is for uh, writing to the file and then creating an object for it. So that's what I'm doing here. We can ignore this particular part where I'm just supplying the file name and we can focus on this part, this line where I'm saying write the object, the student object to this particular file. That's what I'm doing here in this particular, in this three lines of code that I'm writing the student object to the file. So when Java has to write this object to the file, it is automatically going to serialize it. That's the only way Java can write an object to the file. So you serialize the object and then you print that message that the object has been serialized. Again, you can ignore this part as well. Like I said, we will not focus on this. But what we technically did is we just wrote, we just wrote the object to a file by serializing it. Then I try to deserialize it. So I load the file, load this same file into the Java JVM, and then I read the object. And the way I read the object is by using this object input stream class. I supply the file that read this particular file. And then I call the read object method, which is going to return an object, a general object. When you call the read object method, the read object method does not know that it is a student type object. So you, so you need to explicitly cast this to the student type so that you can store this as a student object. If you do not cast this, you will get an error because like I said, read object does not know anything about the student class. So what does, what does this mean is that when you serialize an object, the class type information is lost. You cannot store the class type information when you serialize an object because the moment you call this write object method from the object output stream class. So you created this object output stream class, you supply the file output location and you call the write object. The moment you call the write object, it's just any Java object for the, this Java program. The signature of the student class is lost. It does not know that it's a student class anymore once it has been, once it is being serialized. Similarly, when you deserialize it, the serialization API has no idea about what student class is and what student object is. So you need to tell the read object method explicitly that, hey, you are reading an object of the student type. And that's how this line works. Once you explicitly provide the casting operation, once you have casted it, we try to print the same deserialized object to see if all the state which we stored in the object is still persisted there or not when we deserialize it. So our major focus in this particular class is this object output stream classes and the write object method. These are the two most important statements which you need to take care of. The file uh, output stream is basically a file location. What is an output stream? We will talk about that later, but what, uh, the, whenever you need to serialize, you need to use this particular class called object output stream. So that's all I'm doing here. I'm serializing the object with this, these values. And then I will deserialize and I will again print the object to see if these values are still there or not. So let's run this application. So when I run this application, let's start from here. First, this sysout gets called, which says object has been serialized. So you see object has been serialized. And what I serialized was the student object, which had the value of name as John, age as 25, and the address as 23 East California. And that's what gets printed here. Then this whole block gets completed. This whole try block gets completed. It's a standard try catch block. You see, I have also added the IO exception. You need to do that because these file operations will force you to catch or throw the IO exception, which is a checked exception. That's why it will force you to do that. Then we move to the deserialization block where we create an object of the object input stream class. And then we call the read object. We cast it to the student type and then we print the object. So when I print this object, this line gets printed, object has been deserialized, and then I can see that the exact same state is still there. The name which I set in the object is still there after being, after being deserialized, the age and the address is exactly intact. So this is how we, you can serialize an object, send it anywhere you want, and then the consumer application need to read the object and cast it back to the student type and they will be able to see the exact same state which you saved in the object just before serializing it. 
what if you have a use case where you do you have a property in a in a student class or in your object but you do not want that to be serialized that's also a use case where you may have 50 different properties inside the student class and one of the properties something which you do not want to serialize because you do not want the consumer application to see that value if you ever had that scenario use the transient variable so transient is again a keyword and the moment you put this keyword in front of a member variable that variable becomes transient the use case of transient variable is that if you do not want this x to be serialized and deserialized then you put the transient keyword in front of it the normal member variables will automatically get serialized and deserialized when the object is serialized and deserialized but if you have a use case where you do not want a particular member variable to be serialized or deserialized put transient in front of it and then have the getters and setters for this x variable and let's use this and see if this actually gets serialized or not so i created the student object and let me call student dot set x and let's put a value to x let's say 10. so i have set the value of x is 10 and x is a transient variable and then i am serializing the whole object here and then i'm deserializing the object and let's see if i'm able to fetch the value of x after deserializing the student object so i'm calling the system.out.println and the deserialized value of x is object dot get x let's see if i'm able to see the value of x or not so let's run this application again so this is exactly the same as before this is also exactly the same as before but i see the value of x is zero remember i set the value as 10 before serializing it but i don't see the value 10 anymore when i deserialize the object because it was transient if you remove transient from it then you will be able to transfer or travel this value of 10 between serialization and deserialization so if i just remove this here don't change anything at all and i just rerun the application this time when i deserialize the object the value of x as 10 is still present there even after deserialization so this is how you can use the transient variables if you want to not have that object serialized or deserialized when you're doing the serialization and that's all i want to cover in this particular session and in the next session we are going to talk about multi-threading in java if you like this video a thumbs up would be massively appreciated and please don't forget to subscribe to simply code for more programming related videos thank you and we'll meet again in the next session